intense media spotlight often shines on a war zone for the briefest of moments, before the media circus then moves on to cover the next genocide, the next civil war, the next humanitarian crisis. As a result of constantly needing to feed the daily news beast, the war correspondent typically parachutes in to grab a few sensational stories before then moving on, not always understanding the complexities of the situation. As their job title suggests, very few war correspondents return to these war-afflicted countries in peacetime. War correspondents might only parachute into a conflict zone for a day or two, but post-war correspondents have the opportunity to spend the time to get to know the people and country they are covering, essentially reporting without a parachute. I've been working as a freelancer in Africa for the past two years, and I am convinced, now more than ever, of the importance of post-war correspondence. The guns have been silent now in Uganda for many years, and yet still, the ripple effects of two decades of conflict are felt today in the war-ravaged north. But there's the assumption that because the war is over, that people's lives have regained a sense of normalcy. But handicapped infrastructure and high rates of unemployment are challenges for a population that is still physically and mentally struggling to come to terms with the terror unleashed by the Lord's Resistance Army. And for former child soldiers like Mary, their escape from the rebel group was paradoxically just the beginning of their problems. Post-war journalism isn't as romantic as the notion of war journalism, but it has a vital role to play. It is up to journalists to keep that spotlight firmly pointed on countries even when the main event has ended, and report on the challenges faced by the communities in the aftermath of war. Why should I talk to you? These were the first words Jennifer, a former child soldier in Uganda, ever said to me. It was June 2011, and I was just beginning a three-month project funded by Canada's International Development Research Centre. The project focused on the challenges that female former child soldiers face in reintegrating into their communities. And Jennifer's question was a reasonable one. Why should she talk to me? She, like many former abductees, have been poked and prodded by hundreds of other journalists and researchers, all angling for horrific details of their life as a child soldier. Anthropographia, a combination of anthropology and photography, was the unique solution to overcoming this common cynicism in northern Uganda. Five former child soldiers were given digital cameras so that they could help tell their own story. The women were given no instructions other than to take photos of their daily lives. They took photos of their families, their friends, their homes, and where they worked. Some of the images the women took revealed conflicts or issues in their lives that they hadn't brought up in hours of interviews. Christine's photo of a farmer with his cattle looks innocuous at first, but it prompted her to talk for the first time about a land dispute she'd been having with her neighbour. Stigmatised for being a former child soldier, and with no living family members to support her, Christine is under pressure from the farmer to leave behind her ancestral home. This is a story that, without this anthropographic approach, without taking the time to gain the trust of the women, or understand the complexities of the post-war situation in northern Uganda, would never have been told. I'm of the belief that these stories, regardless of the fact they're happening halfway around the world, are stories that Canadians need to hear. In September 2013, I travelled across Canada with Aga Khan Foundation Canada, visiting some of the country's top journalism schools. With Canadian support, AKFC works in Africa and Asia to improve quality of life for some of the world's most vulnerable people. But they are also committed to helping Canadians understand these global issues and the role Canada plays in the world. At a time when media outlets are struggling financially and foreign news bureaus around the world are shutting down, doing this type of embedded freelance work has never been more challenging. But 
I believe it's worth the risk. When the fighting stops, journalists need to leave the parachute behind and stay on the ground to document the bumps along the country's long road to recovery. Thank you.